Hi there, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're working on part two of our Imperial Fist paint scheme. Now, um, this one's going to be a little bit different. We're going to be going, because of the return of Gilliman, we're going to be leaning pretty heavily on the pre-Horus uh, or Horus Heresy uh, era type of paint scheme on them. Uh, this is before they divvied up into the Black Templars, so um, we're going to be doing primarily black with big uh, bright spots of yellow. Uh, very simple, very easy, uh, very high contrast paint scheme to crack off um, so I'm looking forward to getting this guy all done up and uh, yeah it's gonna be awesome so uh, without further ado let's get them all primed up and we're gonna prime them up in black and we'll be right back all right so we've got our Primaris uh, marine here all primed up in black and uh, the next step because they've got kind of this really deep deep kind of silvery armor almost like a, a steel kind of look to them uh, we're going to be dry brushing with lead belcher and um, we want to keep a lot of that depth in there, whatever we can, absolutely. And then um, we're going to go back in and tidy up a little bit. So uh, a bit of an interesting take on this. But what we're going to do now is just uh, we'll start off with the dry brush and we'll uh, kind of go from there. So taking my lead belcher, uh, making sure I don't have too much on my brush here. And then going to my uh, tissue and just wiping a little bit off on there until there's not much paint left on the brush. Uh, and then I'm just going to go in and dry brush. So uh, I'm going to pull down like this and you'll see that it has a little bit of that depth in there. We're also going to be washing this as well. Um, now I'm going to be just constantly pulling down, just kind of hitting uh, the highlights of the armor. We'll get that rough kind of finish to this here, but we'll still leave lots of that black detail in there now uh this looks like you know this looks pretty silver right now uh, lead belcher is such a really good uh, uh paint to kind of work with in terms of it being a base uh but uh we'll be coming in and really tamping that down quite a bit now uh we're going to avoid the helmet we're going to avoid the shoulder pads and um you know you can if you, if you get on it there's no big deal because we're going to be using base paints to cover it up uh but I'll just kind of work my way around the whole model here. Okay, so we can see we've got a nice, you know, relatively heavy dry brush going on uh, with this guy here. Almost looks like a Grey Knight or a Necron army. Hey, look, <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, now, the intention here is I'm going to do a double wash on the uh, silver, the lead belcher on the armor, and that's going to tamp it down. So what we're going to do is we're going to wash it first. That'll be the first wash. Then we don't want to double wash basically all the other colors. So I'm going to apply the wash now. That'll be the first wash on the silver. Then we'll apply the other colors and then do that final wash. So the net result will be two washes for the armor and only one wash for the other colors that we're going to be using uh, essentially. So uh, I'm gonna start with my wash here and I'm just going to uh, give it a quick shake. Now um, I'm gonna apply this all over the armor, uh, nice and simple and easy and fast. Um, the wash that I use is a homemade wash, basically. It's just a, it's just a quick mix. I don't typically like mixing paints. Um, but this one is 25% uh, null oil, 25% Agrax Earthshade to kind of give it that brownie effect in there. And then 50% of that is floor wax uh, or floor polish or floor gloss or whatever the name for it is now. Um, but in this case, uh, it acts as a flow aid and it makes it so that it really goes in and grabs all the nooks and crannies. Uh, we get a little bit of brown for kind of like a dirty kind of feel to it, uh, but we get a little bit of black as well to really just give it a darkening kind of effect. So I'm just gonna go around and apply this to the whole uh, model here. It's nice and thin, so it doesn't really uh, pile up, assuming that you don't let it pool up like I did here. Um, it's a really nice effect and it really has a a good way to kind of tamp down that that sheen on the armor. So this is, um, or I guess the brightness of the armor. Uh, so this is coat one. I'll make sure that I've got, uh, didn't miss any spots in here. And then I'll let it dry for about half an hour or so, 45 minutes. So we can see now that with that wash applied, we've essentially got this nice kind of tamped down uh, silver look. And it really evens out that kind of roughness that you get from, from dry brushing in general and makes it almost like a, a, a kind of a silver black. Don't forget, we're going to hit this again with another wash after we get our base colors on here. So it's going to tamp it down even further. So uh, the next piece for us here is going to be our Avaland Sunset. 
and we're going to basically be going over the shoulder pauldrons, uh, that kind of those open surface areas there, and then we'll be going over the helmet as well. So I'm taking a fairly fine detail brush here, and uh, with the shoulder pauldrons, it's going to be fairly easy. I'm just going to go in here and just kind of go right to the corner of that color and then drag that around. So just tucking in there and then pulling that color down. So I don't want to get any really on that silver that we've built up. Now, if we do screw up, there's there's no problems there. We can always go back in with a little bit of the a little bit of lead belcher and tidy it up and it won't make a big difference on the model. Uh, the other part, as I kind of work my way around the pauldron there, um, the other part I'm going to do is the face of the uh, Space Marine, not the face, but the helmet right there itself. Um, so I'm just going to again go over top of this here and just, now this is a fairly thin down uh, bit of paint here. So I'm just going to go work my way around and I'm going to want to apply this in a couple thin coats, uh, probably no more than two. Uh, and then we're going to wash it and then go over top of it again. So uh, just take your time, load it up a little bit, try not to get too much glopped into the into the recesses there. But I'll work my way around the helmet. I'll do the other pauldron. And then uh, that should be it. I was thinking of doing maybe some yellow on the on the back part of this here, but I think I'm actually, when we do some black, some Abaddon black to really just actually have a kind of a very subtle uh, difference between the black and the silver, um, I think I'm going to work with black at the back and just keep it to the pauldrons and the and the helmet here. All right, so I'll work my way around and get these, uh, the helmets and the pauldrons, the helmet and the pauldrons all done up. All right, so we got the Everland Sunset all settled uh, out here. Now, uh, one of the things I did forget to do was the uh, knee pad on his right, our left here. Um, and I just uh, to, to do that just to break up the lines uh, just a little bit. We're going to be going with a heavy kind of black on the casings for the weapons and a few of the, the accents and highlights, the, the leather on the pouches and all of that. So this is a very subtle scheme. So I want to add those big pops of color uh, wherever I can. So um, let's get into the Abaddon Black. Uh, I'll grab him. And this is going to be primarily for the, um, the leathery bits, like the uh, pouches and the holster and things like that. Uh, we're also going to apply it to uh, the casing for the uh, Hell Blaster here. And uh, essentially, I'm just going to work my way around, and like I have with other guys, uh, like the Ultramarines and then the uh, other Imperial Fists, I want that black casing on there just to have that little bit of kind of visual interest and variety. So I'll work my way across on that. Got a bit more of this paint here. And with this, because it's a base paint, again, you don't want to put it on too thick. It, uh, they tend to thicken up and dry out as you go. I usually toss a couple drops of water in every now and then just to kind of maintain that consistency. Uh, but I'm going to work my way through here. Now, I am in short order with the, uh, with the, the kind of the, the venting here or the, um, the, the kind of cooling, the, the rad here. I am actually going to end up uh, painting over this black a little bit. I'm going to do a dry brush. But I'm just putting the base of the black down for that. Uh, next up for the black, uh, we're going to work on just this kind of reactor casing at the back here for our uh, for the backpack, just to add a little bit of depth and darkness and, and, and deepness, depth and deepness, I guess. And then finally, I'm also going to work on the um, on the uh, leathery bits. So uh, the holster here, we'll do that in a bad and black. Uh, we'll do the uh, pouches in here. We'll do that in a bad and black as well in this little pouch over here. So I'll go through and make sure I get all these pouches. And then finally in that, uh, it's tough to see, but I'll get the belt all the way over and then around the belt buckle itself. Um, that kind of, uh, I don't know if you can see it in here, but just around that central buckle, I'll do that in a bad and black as well. The black's all done now and we can see that it's uh, you know, it is going to be nice because once we tamp this down even further with a wash, it'll bring it closer to the black, but it'll be like this kind of silvery black. And I think there's, be, there's going to be a lot of visual interest and value there. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that uh, comes out with our, uh, comes out in the wash, I guess, comes out with the wash. 
Um, now, we are doing a Hell Blaster for our demo model for this kind of second Imperial Fist thing. So we might as well paint the Plasma Incinerator while we're here. And uh, it's going to be painted just like any other weapon. However, uh, for those veins, those kind of heat uh, radiating veins that come off the top, uh, we're just going to use three simple colors. Uh, we're going to start with uh, Lothar and Blue. And uh, we're just going to fill in that space with uh, Lothar and Blue so that uh, we can see... That we've got uh, that you know that kind of depth of color in there. Now, if you want to leave it just as the metallic, I'm sure that would work just fine as well. Uh, and if you're messy, uh, the nice thing about a bad and black is it is so uh, heavy with pigment that we can just fill it in right away. So I'll paint both sides of this here with uh, Lothar and blue. And you can see that it gets this nice kind of uh, blue kind of glow effect. These these colors go really well together. Um, the next piece I'm going to do, now that I've got the Lothar blue in here, is I'm going to go in with a little bit of Fenrisian gray. Now I'm going to paint essentially a third of those uh, of the veins. So just like an edge highlight, but a really heavy, um, really heavy edge highlight. And um, so visually, I want to make sure that I'm still seeing uh, a little bit of that, uh, the Lothar blue on the other side, but I just want to hit these edges and go with the, with the Fenrisian gray. Now that blue is going to blend into a much lighter color, which will be nice. So I still want to little, leave a little bit of that Lothar blue in there, but I want to get that Fenrisian gray uh, built up fairly well as well. And then finally, even though it's still a little bit wet, it's nice because it actually blends it a little bit. I don't know if it's intentional or if it matters. Uh, we're going to apply the wash as well. We're going to take White Scar then. And with our White Scar, I'm just going to do the same type of, uh, of routine here. I'm going to uh, go in after. This is really thin down, this one here. Uh, I'm going to go after just that extreme edge highlight just at the top here. And I'll just make sure that I just touch it. Now, it looks really bright now. Uh, but it will get tamped down when we do the wash. There. All right, so a little bit of kind of drifting and all that, that's fine. Uh, what will end up happening is, is when we wash it, it'll even all of that out. Um, if you did, however, want to kind of reinforce or bring back some of that other color, uh, then I could just take some of my uh, Fenrisian Gray, for example, or Lothar Blue, and I can just sneak that back in. And at the top, I'm moving around a little bit. That color was quite quite a bit thinned down. So with this one here, I'll just go back in with my Lothar blue and just kind of reestablish a bit of that gradation. So dead simple, um, super super easy. And then when we wash the model, we'll definitely have it all um, kind of come out uh, fairly nicely. Um, so rough blends for sure, but again, it'll 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 all blend together when we wash it. So um, for me, uh, we're getting pretty close to being uh, ready for the wash. I'm just going to finish up the base because I like to have the base all ready and I'll wash it at the same time as the rest of the model. And then that'll act as the second wash on the on the, the, the silver black that we're putting together. And it'll wash the base and the, the yellows and the, and the hell blasters and all that. We don't have to worry about washing the black because, you know, it's not going to get any darker. But um, for the most part, we'll finish this all up. Okay, so he's ready for the wash now. Uh, I've got the base all done up in the usual Grasslands bases. You can look for the tutorial in, uh, just do a search on the channel there for Grassland bases. You'll, you'll totally come across it. Um, we've got the Plasma Incinerator all sorted out in terms of the colors that we're going to have for those those vents, those little radiated, um, uh, you know, kind of tines there. And then um, on top of all of that, we've got all of our colors. I kind of did a dummy check and we're good to go. Now, the one thing I do want to mention is I took a little bit of lead belcher and I just did uh, the cabling off the helmet here and the side bits. And then at the very back of the helmet as well, in here, there's a couple of leads. Um, but other than that, it's uh, ready to go. So uh, I'm going to again, going to jump into this wash here. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to draw out just loads of the color. I uh, kind of tamped down that um, that armor again, but I think what's going to do is add loads and loads of kind of depth to our our yellow here, which is already starting to look pretty solid. And yeah, we'll work our way through. You'll see on the plasma incinerator, we'll just make sure that we work it into those uh, into those little separations there, 
just like that. We'll dress it up here as well. And then we'll make sure that we get all over the model. Now, again, the intent for this here was to make sure that we've got uh, all this, this kind of silvery black to really tamp that down and make sure that we've got that extra layer of, of depth and grime in there. We're just even just making it more of that silver black that we were looking for. Okay, so I'll apply uh, coat number two here uh, over the armor, but we'll be making sure that we get all of the uh, all the yellowy bits and all the colorful elements as well. And uh, on top of that, I'm just going to double double check to make sure I don't get any pooling because uh, this one's going to be a little trickier to fix if we get lots of pooling. All right, so I'll, I'll wash this whole guy up and then we'll let it sit for about 45 minutes again, and then we'll come back and start working on our highlights. Okay, so we got the wash all finished up, that second wash that we did, and you can see that it really did uh, go ahead and bring down that metallic color down to like almost a, kind of a metallic black, very dark, dark silver, which is, uh, I'm going to be honest, I love it. I think it's really cool, um, especially when we start bringing up the other colors as well. So um, the next step here, we're going to work on the, um, the, the plasma incinerator here. And we're going to be working on uh, just taking that white and just kind of topping up that color range. Once we got that, uh, once we got that, uh, you know, color kind of set tamped down, uh, we're gonna have to kind of bring that back up again. So I'm just gonna make sure that I have very, very little paint. I'm looking for a super light dry brush here, and I'm just going to go after uh, those corners. Now uh, you'll see we got the Abaddon black. Uh, so we're taking this white scar here. Uh, and just going over those corners uh, just to bring them up just a little bit just so we can see it again and then um, we'll be going in and that'll dry super fast uh, and then we'll be going in with our Abaddon Black and with the Abaddon Black uh, I'm just going to go and finish up all those little spots that the dry brush kind of went and uh, destroyed or went over again so uh, with the Abaddon Black uh, super simple just going to go in here now and just kind of restore a little bit of a where I dry brushed over top just so that it's not uh, losing that distinctive kind of shape of that uh, cowling of the plasma incinerator there. Okay, so I've got the black all restored on here, and uh, the next step now is going to be to highlight the metallic parts. Now, we're not going for any kind of uh, gold for the embellishments, uh, but what we did do is we did leave that one coat of lead belcher, and I'm going to take my Runefang steel now, and I'm going to just do a little overbrush of all the things that I want to be the lighter silver, so anything but the armor. So there's going to be a few spots in here, and... Uh, just again, this is a very much a take your time type thing. So getting most of the uh, paint off my brush, I'm just going to go in and do the Aquila here, and I'm just going to overbrush. So uh, just basically a wet dry brush, if you will, uh, going at an angle so I don't uh, fill in all the details there. And it's a subtle effect, but you can see that it is actually uh, lighter, which is good. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over all of the things that I want to be a bright silver. So this is essentially going to be anything that I don't want to have that uh, blackish silver tint to it. So we'll start with the weapon here. Now with the weapon, I'm just going to do an overbrush of all the high points here. And you can see that it brings out just a load or a pop of the color. Uh, up on the handle, I'm just going to do a little overbrush, which so is just touching across the top there. Okay, and then I'll go through and just pick out all of the highlights, basically, the major highlights of the weapon. So, of course, with our, uh, you know, our bolt rifles and all that, we'll be uh, doing the same thing. Okay, and on top of that, uh, we're going to do some details on the pack here. So, uh, I'll just touch up the handle for the bolt pistol. Uh, I'll just do a little overbrush over these little exhaust vents at the back just so that they stand out from that kind of silver black there. I'll pick up these little side pieces here on the side and then I want to make sure I get just the outside of these exhaust vents at the back here. So I want it to be a very subtle but I definitely want it to be a two-tone type of metallic. 
Now for this large vent at the back, okay, I'm going to make sure that I kind of make it stand out a little bit. Uh, we did leave it for that just single kind of washing there. So just around the outsides of the vents here, I'll just do a little highlight like that. And then at the front metallic piece of that vent, I'll just do like a little overbrush just to bring some kind of light back to that piece there. And then finally, we'll touch up the uh, tubes here just on the helmet, just to give that little bit of pop back to that silver. Okay, so I'll finish the other side of the plasma incinerator and then we'll be back to do the armor. Now the last of the metallic highlights is gonna be our armor and we're gonna do that with uh, lead belcher here. Now, um, we washed that other lead belcher down twice, so it should be quite dark. So what we're gonna do now is just bring up that little bit of extra, uh, little bit of extra punch uh, around the armor. So we're still gonna achieve an edge highlight but now it's essentially the lighter color here. So um, just going to work my way around any of these edges here and just bring in that little bit of lead belcher. And you can see how bright it looks um, compared to that washed down version of it. So I'll just go around and I'll do all of the edge highlights for all the armor, uh, any of the shoulder pieces, anything like that, uh, around here, over brushing the fingers. So just working my way around any time that there's an edge and uh, yeah, just giving a little top up with the uh, lead belcher. Now for the yellow, it's gonna be a super simple uh, just application of aerial yellow. Uh, and uh, we've already got the foundation for all the yellow set. Um, so the next step for us here is going to be to take our aerial yellow Okay, make sure we have lots of control over what's going on. And uh, where it's round, I'm just going to just kind of start at the top, kind of third and streak down like this. Uh, I want it to look a little bit on the dirty side. So I'm just gonna do uh, some vertical streaks here. Now it looks a little clumpy, so I'm gonna let that dry. Okay, don't uh, put too much on. Make sure your paints are nice and thinned, okay. And when it comes to this guy here, you can see I had a little bit of wash uh, kind of kicking over. Uh, so again, I'm just going to start this streaky method and work my way uh, down. Now it's pretty thin and yellow is when you're going to have to build up. Now the rest of the model was super easy. So with this one here, we're just going to take our time and build it up. So you can see I've got very uh, a very nice thin coat on there right now. So uh, that's where the patience kicks in. And we'll keep working our way around the model. And when we get to that point, uh, you know, where it's, uh, we've kind of gone around the model once and got all the details, we can approach it again. Uh, for the crest of the helmet here, I'm just going to do this. Now this whole time, I am not uh, going to let anything get into those deep recesses that we've got from the shade there, from the wash. So I'll start with the crest and I can kind of see I've got a bit of a starting point there and then I'm just going to work it over. But again, nice and streaky, uh, take your time and slowly build up that color. And it really doesn't take long uh, once you've started the process. Now with the face, once you've got, make sure you don't have very much on your brush, you can just drag down vertically over that bridge of the nose and you'll get that all that transition of color here. So again, not too much paint. Now if you do blob into the, the detail a bit, you can always come back with a bit of wash and tidy it up. So just make sure you avoid those recesses and take your time. That's really the best, that's really the only secret you need. Okay, so I'll do uh, the, the other pauldron here and then I'll let it uh, dry for a few minutes. You can see it's already drying down at the bottom. So probably once you've worked your way around, you can just keep going in circles. And you'll see down here it's already dried. So what I'll do is I'll just again another thin coat. And after about two coats, maybe three, 
uh, you can see that it really starts to build up that nice bright color but you still got all these dark kind of recesses going on in there so take your time uh, and after a few coats and it's not too many now again remember you worked your way around the model after a few coats that color really starts to build up and if you do it streaky you get this nice kind of dirty uh, you know battle worn look to it here so take your time work your way through and we'll be right back so we can see now that that yellow has really brought out that that contrast in the model we've got the very dark silver elements in there we've got the very light shiny silver elements in there and of course that yellow is a beautiful contrast to that you know almost black um, you know metallic color there which is which is which is really awesome now the actual black needs a little bit of extra love just to make it differentiate itself out from the kind of that silvery black if we hadn't done that already with that lead belcher. Um, so the next piece that we're going to be working on is our Eschen Gray and um, we're just going to do a very simple edge highlight uh, around all of the uh, you know actual black parts. So uh, in this case here Make sure I get this thinned down a little bit. So in this case here, we're going to be working on, uh, you know, that the, um, uh, the housing of the plasma incinerator and just kind of working our way just around, just to give it a little bit of that kind of lightness back, uh, give a little bit of depth because we can't really low light the black. And if you go over too much, you can always come back in with a little bit of uh, Abaddon black and just tidy it up in there. So you'll see that my, um, my edge highlighting tends to be a little bit on the messy side because I usually go in with a little bit of Abaddon black and just tidy it up. And I might actually even just show that to you. Uh, so I'll continue along with my uh, somewhat messy highlight here and across here and uh, all of just you now just a little overbrush on some of these uh, it doesn't have to be a massive thing because uh, we are going to come back in and fix it um, and I've got a whole video on that subtractive kind of edge highlighting and it does really speed things up when you're painting in a hurry uh, but this one I'll just do nice and careful and just go just around the edge of that reactor and maybe just a little bit of a a tap of color on the reactor itself. Uh, we'll probably come in here with a uh, decal. I know I get a lot of flack for saying it the Canadian way, but the Canadians have decals uh, or decals if you are, uh, you know, in other parts of the world. Um, but we Canadians, we sure like our decals, eh? Anyway, um, so I'll just touch in over the black, super easy. And uh, while that's even drying, let's see if I can track down a bad in black here. Yeah, I got it right here. Um, even while that's drying. Um, I can immediately go back in with my Abaddon Black and just go in and touch up just those areas. So you'll see here this one casing was pretty messy and I can actually go back in with the Abaddon Black and just go in and tidy that up right away. And you can see it does a great job, uh, just a very quick highlight uh, without having to worry too much about uh, being super precise. It's a lot easier to paint the larger areas than the uh, than the smaller ones for sure. Uh, and in this one here, I can just kind of edge that uh, uh, Eschen Gray back a little bit. And with these, I can just do a little loop around the inside. And there we go. So nice, easy, simple way to do it. So now um, I'll finish off the rest of the uh, the weapon here. And then uh, I'll finish off the base, but I think we're essentially done. But uh, I want to do one more thing, and that's the black line. And uh, so I'll be back and do that. Okay, so the next step we're going to use our, our Micron pen here. I've got the 01. Uh, normally I use the uh, 005 uh, for black lining. But because this has got such similar colors, I want a little bit more of a bolder line. So I'm using the Micron uh, 01. Now what this is for is I'm just basically going to go in and I'll use it in two circumstances. Uh, the first one will be wherever two edges meet. And you can see it's a very subtle effect, but it definitely defines uh, those boundaries between the two different plates that we have there. Okay, so wherever two colors meet, uh, sorry, two kind of panels meet, I'll put that in. And also I'll do it wherever two colors meet. So in this case here, uh, we'll use it on the pauldron and you can see right away how nice of a def defined line it builds. Um, and it makes it look like you just, you know, intended to have that black line there all along because you've got that little bit of shading 
and then you've got that uh, that nice hard line that defines the two different colors. Okay, now on the helmet, uh, this is going to be especially important here. Make sure we can get it in the frame. Uh, I'm just going to go and I'm just going to just kind of tuck it into wherever these textures meet, and it does a very good job of defining that that yellow there. See, so the big difference between the the two, one has just the shading, and the other one has uh, the the black lining. All right, so anywhere two colors meet, anywhere there is a difference in texture, I'm going to black line with my you know, somewhat heavier set uh, micron pen here. Okay, so with the black lining all done, we can see that our model is now complete. Uh, I went ahead and finished up the base. And, um, you know, yeah, I like, like the color scheme quite a bit. Very simple to execute. Um, you've got very little colors in terms of your paint palette, uh, but I think the end result is pretty darn cool. Uh, I like the high contrast of the yellow and the black. Obviously, yellow and black is your two highest contrasting colors, and we've gone kind of with a metallic -y black armor, you know, black uh, kind of cowlings and all on the weapons and the reactor and things like that. And then we went with that bright yellow for the knee pad, the helmet, and the, sh and the pauldrons there. So... I think it looks really cool. I think it's going to stand out really nicely on the field, and it's unique. It's uh, you know, it's a pre-heresy scheme, obviously, but it's kind of you know pre-Templar and you know still having ties to the uh, uh, to to the Imperial fists as a core chapter. So, yeah, really liking the look and feel. Just that general kind of emotion of the model is quite quite nice and bold and and, and outstanding. So. Uh, that's it for this guy. Uh, really liking the feeling. I, like I, I know I'm harping on that, but it just feels good, and seeing a bunch of these guys on the field would look great. So um, that's it for this one. Uh, if you guys liked the video, obviously hit that like button. It uh, really helps with the YouTube algorithms and gets the video and the channel out there. Uh, if you want more videos just like this, you can jab that subscribe button if you haven't already, and um, we get notifications of all the future videos. And if you really, really want to know when we do it, there's a little bell icon that's right beside the subscribe icon and um, that'll make sure that uh, you get notified on all your devices and all of that. So uh, yeah, I hope this was a value to you guys, and we'll catch you in the next video.